So I'll call us to order at 633. Let me share. And recording in progress. Next item public comments. Seeing none, hearing none, no um, communication through staff from the public that you'd like to bring to the floor. No. Okay. Yeah, it's, been, it's been a quiet couple of weeks. So, yeah. All right. So, um, do you have any public comments? No public. No public. None, none have come through. Nothing in your back pocket. Um, approval of the minutes of October 25th, 2022. Thank you, Jen, for making real live paper copies. I took the liberty of reading. Um, this was my dual, dual hat minutes. So there's a couple of typos, fixes with two eyes, moves said twice, Rachel misspelled. Otherwise, I understand it, but, um, if you want to take a minute with the October 25th minutes, um, to see if there's other corrections, I've got three typos. And I would entertain a motion to approve the uh, people. Are happy. I need to approve. Okay. It was the typo stick. Okay, Rachel has moved to approve the 20. October 25th uh, minutes uh, with uh, three typos fixed. Did you get the one at the end here? Reserved for the capital I for it, Jen. Yeah, there we go. Typo number four. Um, looking for a second. Um, I'll second. Thank you. Dave seconds. Um, discussion items or call the question. <clears throat> Would I be rushing it to say all those agreed? Well, it sounds like it's unanimous to me. All right. Um, all, all, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Appreciate it. Opposed? Okay, that's unanimous approval of the October 25th, 2022 uh, minutes. And uh, next up is the financials. Actually, we're, we're heading into the draft budget 2023, so we'll just, uh, no need to move in motion on it. You'll okay. see we're in the budget now. Sounds good. Um, Jen, is that you want to take lead or sure. field questions or draw our attention to? Or? So I think, um, and I, I did it in the narr the budget narrative in the email, so it may be a little bit redundant. But um, with this year's budget, we were looking at doing a three percent cola in, in terms of salaries, and we looked at we saw that Social Security was offering like an eight point a bigger cola, but we felt nervous about putting that hard coded into salaries. So we came up with splitting it in half of like three percent for cola, and then a three percent inflation bonus. We were calling it that would just be for this year to help the salaries and the camera operator wages be a little bit more manageable while it's super expensive right now to live. And then, but it wouldn't be something that we'd constantly be looking at to fund for future years. So, and then ultimately that comes to an increase in compensation of 6% is what we're looking, what we were asking for. And um, I think we did make some adjustments in trying to, cause that's where the majority of the increase would be, would be in compensation and the, the lines related to compensation, like, FICA and unemployment. And so we did reduce some things in terms of, I think, um, the um, the travel expense, we were thinking we weren't going to go to conferences. Um, I think we did increase our ed educational development. So professional development, we thought we'd spend a little bit more time this year or 2023 
in getting up to speed. I think there's some classes in fundraising that Christopher was interested in. We're looking at doing some DEI training. So we're thinking that in the professional development, we would increase that amount instead of um, doing so much at the conferences. So I think- so um, we, To follow along, are we best- Yeah, that 2023 stop? budget is where it's this year's budget against last year's budget. Um, and yeah. then a, a category of what's actually happening. So, and then is professional development its own line item? Or it's it? called Ed D, Educational Development. It's on the second. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So, I think, um, I think outside of that, we did have, um, we did in order to kind of look at trying to come out with a net zero for the budget, we did in the income. I think what was um, a little bit different is there's a line item for government appropriations and income, and that twenty five thousand we talked about it in our our meetings here that we it's it's definitely coming, and so it's it's not something that we're hoping that the legislature will pass, but it, they have, and so we were we put it in this year's income because it wasn't in the budget for last year, and we could use that to offset that compensation increase that we are looking at, and then the. Other bit would be in capital gains. I know, like Rob last year did a thirty thousand for to also help offset his budget. So what we were hoping for is that ten thousand in capital gains would kind of offset the um, the cable revenue amount. So I I did budget a little bit less than what was budgeted this year. So we kind of thought. We took the last check that we got from Comcast, which was lower, mm -hmm. and said, okay, if this is how it's going to go forward, this is what the budget amount should be. And so because it was lower, we did put some money in the capital gains to kind of offset that. And it could be that we don't necessarily need to use it if the checks from Comcast come in bigger, but because we weren't, I'd rather budget, I think. Right cautiously and yeah. say, okay, we can't, we can't know that the checks will be bigger. So but that, um, the 4010 line, the 353, mm -hmm. is that four times the last Comcast check? It is, yeah. That's how you come up with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Other questions or places to focus? Even, so you led with compensation, even with the coal in increases um, in the two different ways you're doing it. It's only two grand above the 2022 budgeted. Is that right? Yes, because I mean, and then actuals came in low, but but the yes. budgeted was 288, and we're sitting at 290 here. Yes, and so I mean, it's still the seeing the effect of the co-directorship. It's mm -hmm. still a little bit cost savings, just because it's a staff of three versus four. And we did look at um, we put in for a post-production minion that would help at the 30, we calculated 30 hours, so less than full time, mm -hmm. and then the camera operators. So it's still, there was some cost savings just because of the lack of full that's, time. That's all within 5010. Mm -hmm. all, yes. of the, all of those um, yeah. mm -hmm. um, salaries or wages. Yeah. That's a total, it's not another line item with other. No, no. Gotcha. no. Other questions, comments, thoughts? Seems really reasonable to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So, staff looking for a motion to accept. Yes. Yeah. If there's no questions. Doings um, over doings. Do we need to wait for CJ to be back? Um, we do have just a bare quorum, so you make a good point. <laughs> um, but certainly um, the motion, the seconding, and then discussion, um, you know, the motion doesn't force the calling of a question. And she may be stepping right back down. She's right there. Yeah. Right mm -hmm. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, CJ? Yes, sir. We are, um, I don't know if we, so the, uh, Jim presented the 2023 budget and drew our attention a little to compensation coming up a bit for cost of living increases. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, that's the state sending us that 25. We know it's on the way. That's the 12.5 we did get already. Mm -hmm. um, and Jen and I had discussed that line, the COLA and the other special great. provision. I talked with Rob Chapman about uh, they are still debating that very thing down in his new organization down south. Okay. Personally, so we I get it. Kind of crazy. Here. We yeah. had some questions and they appear to have been exhausted. And I was wondering if there was a motion on the floor. But since we have a, um, you know, a bare only, forum, yeah. The only thing is, would now be a good time to bring up the either the financial review or audit? Um, certainly, that's, that's potentially a cost, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to be somewhere between. Most likely, I mean, I would suggest that we be a little bit generous, given that we haven't done it in eight years, and provide. Do you want to just provide the background? You were the, the handoff from Treasurer CJ was requesting that we have a look see from an outsider mm -hmm. audits um, tradition. We haven't done one in a long time. So Jen and I got on the phone, yeah, and thing. God bless you. You were just looking up uh, these old things and. So it turns out we haven't had an audit since, was it 2005, if I recall? Like the official title of an audit was 2005, but then- And then there was a financial then, review in 2015. So, and then uh, since then, nothing. So I talked to Rob Chapman about this uh, via text today. And uh, the cost of the financial review was something which he said was cheaper than an audit was something along the order of what, a little under five? Yeah, that was like four nine. Yeah. And, and so a full on official audit is a bit more robust and also expensive than mm -hmm. um, we have needed for an organization of our size. It's not clear, but it hasn't been done. And uh, yeah. I think it was uh, one of you who were saying that there was a decision to do it every three years, but that just wasn't. Uh, I do. I think we probably had a 2012. And then 2015. I, I think we did have a little bit of a rhythm going on financial reviews. Yeah. Well, you know, was I there have, or, oh, okay. sorry, our Comcast negotiation and we wanted to have some sort of financial. You know, I think I think when the contract was due up, that was that did and, say, yeah, we hey, were let's like, make sure should we do a full the, blown audit? That was good time. Look at the price of gold. Maybe unless they bring it up we'll do yeah. Yes yeah. yeah. do the thing. Yeah. And so um the uh so anyway so and and I've been, as you can probably tell from, you know, talking with you and Rob and Mike Doyle and Mike Abadi, um, nothing that I have run across has given me any reason to, other than good corporate governance, to make the recommendation that we do something between a financial review and an audit, but it is good corporate governance. Um, and we are, you know, doing an essential function. And fortunately, uh, we were able to assist the community during the, the lockdowns in a way that raised the visibility as the value that we provide to the community, but that also raises our visibility. In Is there ways. anything in our um, the papers that we have that define our organization that either mentions an audit or a financial review or anything at all? Rob was not aware that oh. it was an absolute requirement. Um, and so, but having just read the riot Sorry, having just read the recommendations for good corporate governance to the EC Viber governing body, I have pretty recent uh, time looking them up, and they are good corporate governance. So we would be we would be honing in on line item fifty sixty accounting fees, which is presently at thirty eight hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's for our accountants. We do have accountants that do our accounting. <laughs> Right. So, Maybe would a secretary. financial review be on that line item, or, or would, where would where would something like that? Be? Just I'm just trying to get, get us it's, on specific. It's yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's its own line item because otherwise you have the fox and the hen house in the same line. You don't have your account do your financial review. No, because mm -hmm. that's kind of so. It's like when you have the finance and audit committee, right? And that's really the no, no. Do we have to, don't check your own work. Exactly. Do we have to, do we have to reapply for five hundred one c three or nonprofit? No, uh, as long as we continue to, um, and this is because I run another five hundred one c three. Yeah. Um, we don't reapply. Uh, we do need to file our nine nineties, which um, assuming our accountants do. Yes. 
<laughs> and so as long as the 990s still nobody's are rocking that. our boat so we're still nonprofit. So. no and we're in the category of nonprofit where our annual revenue streams puts us in the okay in the just role of like filing a full 990 we don't get to file the postcard mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. so i'm hearing this would a financial review would fall under subcontractors or consultants i was going to say i would think the consultants so currently our in our consultant line we do have nathan who was the strategic plan consultant so I did leave that amount. So the 63 was what he um, wrote in his proposal. And so we're paying up. some of it this year, but I figured that he hadn't put in a price for the community needs assessment. And that would be, so I just left that 6,300 that he put in the proposal. But I would think that if the financial, the CPAs would maybe go in the consultant line item, mm -hmm. and then we could just break it out if you wanted to see um, how it got paid out. That seems logical yeah, to me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm afraid this is, <laughs> Mike would probably be like, yeah, or no. And I'm like, <laughs> so it's good. Is there, no, um, are, is there um, uh, are so we, what are we, we, going are to we looking to double that consultant line? I, guess that would kind I would of recommend we allocate 10 and then give it back if we don't need it. And if we need more, we'll, come back to the board and say, here's the proposal. Um, after, uh, yeah, it'll be an additional 10 in the budget. Right. Um, what uh, the other piece of information I have for the board is that um, Rob mentioned the person and you also recalled this person to come and just talk to us about what are these things and what do they do? And it seems to me that if we're allocating a chunk of change to look at our financials, it should be known what it is that we're getting. So uh, I recommend that we put this into the budget, request that we make a modification for a $10,000 line item addition, and before we actually uh, pull the trigger on it, okay, have the person Could come we back say and, up to, and then maybe Jim could track down the actual number and, and get that in our final budget? Yes, and the actual number, what my thought was, is to have the person come back and present to us that would be our what February, these different, that would yeah. be our February meeting. Yeah, or have a quick special meeting only to deal with that, depending on when that person's available. Yeah, last time it didn't happen on a regular meeting. So. Mm -hmm. uh, but you got the name from Rob. Yeah, I don't have a last name yet. Oh, that's all right. But we're 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 moving. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, I have one last question, please. Jim, did when we had our annual meeting, did we give people the the budget for to look at the people that came to visit for our no i don't think we printed out any paper we did have it up on the screen, screen. Summer in, yeah the screen of okay. the financials not I just didn't know yeah. what they got if they were curious thank you um so potentially we're at a motion to accept with <laughs> um an amendment for up to 10 Additional on the consultant line item. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that could I, I can't make or a motion. Or an audit or that. financial review would be the line item specifically. Yeah, and so well, I mean, if we're at the net operating zero, it'll take us ten under. Is that it modifies yeah. the whole budget? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, we'll have to look at that. Yeah, true. What, like, what kind of work is that? I mean, I think where is it that 30 is the catch all? We're rough at 30, and this year you put 10, this year we just put 20, and the 10 has gone, right? Isn't that how we do yeah, it? Uh, if that's okay with everyone, yeah, we could make those two adjustments together. Well, we so, could in capital gain. We've got the 4,800. Rob last year said, I mean, is that just something you ballpark? Um, I mean, that 30, he. It, it was a budget even outer, right? I well, so I think it was like when he did the thirty. I don't because we ended up with a deficit budget last year, anyways. So it was like in addition. And I thought when when I remember re like listening to the video that maybe it was under the guidance of Mike Doyle saying you need to spend some money or we need to spend some money, and that's why he felt comfortable putting thirty thousand in that capital gains because Mike was saying we need to spend it, and then with yeah. the the, yeah. And then ending up with a deficit of only thirty thousand versus like if he hadn't put the capital gains, it would have been like sixty thousand. Right, right, right. 
And we have that 20. We have that 20 we were just looking at. Like, what are we doing with well, 20? We're flirting yeah. with the three it's quarters. Yeah. Well, I mean, that that was me saying when we get past there. So don't be giving out the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's not that. It's that um, right now, a, an experienced executive director had built in a cushion of $30,000. And to be cutting into that cushion for an audit is not necessarily a good idea. It, what it suggests to me is we take a quick look at the budget and we find out, can we, and Jen, you you and the, the three of you have put this together, can you find money in the budget without cutting into your cushion? Because the cushion represents to me good fiscal policy and good planning. I mean, it's rare that your budget nails it. And given that your annual expenditures uh, are approximately was it four hundred thousand expenses? Yeah, yeah, it was like four six. Yeah, four, I mean, six. even thirty thousand represents uh, you know mere single digit percentages. Uh, it's it's about an eight percent overlay, and then you're busted. So um, I don't really I'm, want to cut into your thirty thousand cushion. If that's last year's, Rob Rob came up with that thirty. Jim yeah. say ten. Yeah. Um, the other way we can approach this is. I'm recalling that person coming in and explaining to us the difference between an audit and a financial report and what we learn, what we understand. And the board didn't act until it actually got all that mm -hmm. instead of having the person coming in after to say, here's what you just bought. Yeah. They we came in ahead. Well, the, the problem with not putting anything in is we already know. Uh, well, let me let me stop and say straw man is about right. Can we ask for a straw man? Do we agree that it's a good idea to do a financial review or audit? Um, or is the board saying it doesn't want to do that? It's a board decision. I, I mean, I'm I'm curious about. I'm sorry. I think it'd be a good yeah, a good idea. Yeah, yeah. But I think we yeah. should definitely maximize the number of voices. Um, You're in agreement. I'm, I'm sort of agreeing, but I'm also realizing that. This budget for 2022 and this one for 2023 is a January to December budget, which means that anything that's new kicks in on January 1st. Or some companies don't do that way. They do it from June 1st or from September 1st. Right. So I'm just trying to figure out, are there any things that are controversial in the budget that we're wanting to vote on that uh, are going to change and make a difference that uh, some of us hadn't even talked about mm -hmm. or any of our staff or any other things that we do and don't do or any things that we fund. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm just sort of asking for my own information. Um, do we need to talk about what will not be done and what will be different as of January 1st? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is the right question. So I, I guess, Jim, do, are you like? Are there obvious areas of fat here, or is my, or would that be a pretty <laughs> tricky game, or is it all about just kind of moving, playing with that forty eight hundred number? And then again, there is that that first line item that uh, Mark brought us to seeing that twenty is basically just cash. So mm -hmm. one thing I want to think that potentially, you know, I don't think it would be up. A ten. It was probably a, a six, seven, eight. And the problem is, but we don't know. So I don't really want to. I actually, I would really like to get the information in front of the decision. So to help the board, I did get the amount, and I think Jen, you got that for, for the, just the financial review, view. and wasn't it that was the four nine, four thousand nine hundred mm -hmm. was so, for in twenty fifteen. Twenty fifteen, yeah. yeah. Which so, I would imagine is going to be more more now. Yeah. <laughs> So, and that was just for the financial review, which is deeper than the audit. So my recommendation for 10, and the reason I suggested it is, hopefully we can come in under. And as I said, at that, if it comes in over, and we decide that's the prudent thing to do, then at that point, we can make a decision as a board to allocate the additional. Um, and uh, I, for me personally, instead of sending you guys back to the drawing board, knowing that we have money, that is not in the budget game of 2023 makes a lot more sense. We just got our report from Mark. Um, that first line item of 20, we would be, you know, potentially using half of it. 
but we would still have that tan and that's like a gravy line item. so mm -hmm. their decision then is against mark's recommendation to invest it because out in the hallway he's like we can move it into a better well is it is a financial report an investment i mean is a scholarship an investment i mean do you want to do you want to go into a mutual fund well he said that the money market account that he was talking about was completely liquid so you could put it in That's but right. it's just going to continue to make more money in the interim uh so we might need. yeah so to go into that in more detail that money market is accepting for example bond revenues that that cannot immediately be reinvested so the, when he was asking, what's this horizon thing? It's actually the uh, global investment fund. And one of the things I need to go and ask him for is that the global investment fund note for horizon actually has a higher rate of return than is listed here. But it may be that there was, because they're handling the investment, perhaps there were fees that our previous charter agreed to pay mm. to get that very good rate of return, which is about 6%. All, all other, our the way the fund has been set up and the way we've been running this whole time is that when money comes in, it gets reinvested immediately. Right. And that's partly because it doesn't cost us anything. The money keeps working. And as you can see from the the red and green lines in the uh, in the portfolio uh, summary, mm -hmm. that has resulted in a position of better financial yeah, but what, what I was, Drew was trying to bring up, though, is it's not really a question of whether we invest that 20 or not. You yeah. could put it into a money market account and it continues making slightly yeah. better money. That 20000 that you're talking about, and then if it's needed, it could be drawn right back. And you so the say, work question is the right one. It is, mm -hmm. let's take a look. We have budget. Jen, thank you for putting in the actuals because that helps so much. And now we can look mm -hmm. at budget versus actual. So we have you know, for example, if you look at lines 6090 and 6095, travel expenses budgeted 3,000, actual 1,600. On the other hand, mileage budgeted 2,500, actual mm -hmm. 6,100 should bring us to two questions. Why was uh, mileage so much over? Normally you budget based on historical, I think um, it was a COVID COVID budgeting for lack gas of costs. Gas costs went yeah through the yeah. roof, right? Changed dramatically. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Those are good, yeah. exactly. Um, but you know, so we've got we've got a moment where you know we haven't had a lot of time to look at this, and because as you point out, the fiscal year ends in December thirty first. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of time to look at it, so you know. I was also going to point out that the van request is for fiscal year 23 uh, is twice what it was. So it's 600,000. So that would be, if that's approved, I got, there would be a second a government appropriations payment. It's not approved yet. It's yes. not approved yet. But so, I mean, so, I mean, like, what well, you know, now that we're in the system, we've been, this, this would be the third. I don't know. I mean, like, there's, Thank the you for item? saying that. Yeah, that good. is again good. good. Yeah. What line item are you talking about? I'm just so the 25 is coming. Oh, that's yeah. a check that's coming. Yeah. The the, mm -hmm. the 25,000. So there could be a 50,000 that comes sure. within the year too. It feels like to me the lines where there's some flexibility to change are pretty small numbers. Yeah. And then the lines that are big numbers are things like rent and wages, which we don't want to. We cannot. Yeah. Touch. So. Mm -hmm. Um. I, I would not want to pull money out of sort of the core mission of what work is doing to pay for the financial review if there's if there's money to be had mm -hmm. elsewhere. Now the Vermont Youth Documentary Line Lab line uh, sixty one hundred. Um, yeah, it's on the back, which is uh, now. Are we looking? Yeah, we're, we're looking backwards on this one. And then we should be looking forward on this one. So here's our forward looking budget. Is that no way? Here it is 2023 budget. Yeah. So this, this is the friendly and Yeah, exactly. The 2023 budget um, for the Youth Documentary Lab, it net zero. So it, we're expecting 5,000 in income and like expenses. So previously, I think that the previous budget had it where. Orca was willing to expend out 2000 so mm -hmm. it wasn't in so this year we said okay let's we have it in there because it's part of 
it's a project of Orca Media and it's like a DBA. So we wanted it to be shown, but we're not looking to either make any money or spend any money on it's it. It's moving to self-sustain. That's great. Um, and in terms of mileage, I did, I don't have it in the packet, but I did try to look at previous years to see what the mileage, and it was a COVID, like the last two years, the mileage amount was budgeted much lower because we weren't going out, mm -hmm. but it did start to match up with the previous years mm -hmm. where we were doing more traveling. So that's yeah. where, and I, uh, that amount came back and saying, okay, and what I try to do with mileage also was to look at, you know, these meetings that we have, it's pretty standard, like twice a month, we go out to Ro Rochester. It's always like, so I did try to look at that to see how close we were like with the budget and previous budgets to say, okay, it makes sense based on the meetings that we already covered and what we're looking at. Yeah. And so in terms of that, I think it is the COVID amount that the previous years, he just kind of carried over. Yeah. yeah. So that wasn't an objection. It was more oh. saying when you're looking mm -hmm. at things, but, um, but it's also helpful for us to understand how you're thinking. So. So does the increase in band expense, where does that show up? Uh, that's the government appropriations. The band expense or band income? Oh, I thought we were talking about our paying. Yeah, our, the way you described it as band, band. it's like, oh, what is that money? But it's actually the government. Van is the distributor of the okay. government. Yeah, sorry. The, the van is yeah. the, the member organization that we're a part yeah, no, of. I knew yeah, that, but I just thought that they voted on uh, funds as a group. Van had oh right although the they, coalition that we're all part of yeah they there's no I mean they haven't voted on the, it's sense. just even distribution of the across okay. the twenty four right. yeah uh, and I think you see that in the dues and subscriptions so that the amount that we pay with toward we band for that, right. yeah being it's, part of that group it's in there and it's I did add a little bit just like inflation one. yeah yeah but um thank you that's where that item would be so when chris was talking about van earlier it wasn't ex pay payment to them it was the distribution of government funds right yeah and i was just looking for that there was like a four-year plan that that i was part of to yeah uh, to basically double every year to the, the the request from the state okay thanks so the compensate the uh, compensation uh, line 50 10 goes across how many people so that's everybody. So it's the it's the full time. It's the camera operators. Um, those are the two. And then and if we use the camera operators for some post production work, like so, it, it encompasses everything. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. the three percent whole. We were hoping like we were doing it for the the camera operators as well as the three percent inflation bonus that we were asking for was also to be toward the camera operators as well. And the inflation bonus does not affect base pay. For no. Going forward. Yeah, I saw how you did that. Um, so to get at... Um, One thing I have a question about, health insurance, are the premiums going down? No. So health insurance, um, it's just the full-time people are offered it. And because, like, Rob's put into place a cash in lieu of benefits, so uh, that's where... Part of that compensation, if a, a full-timer chooses to take it, it'll show up in the compensation line rather than the health insurance line, because that's what we pay out. Mm -hmm. And then so. we, there was, in 2020, or 2022, it looks higher because it was, it was budgeted for four people. Is that yeah. 62,000? So because in 2022, he put all like what the health benefits would have been in the health insurance, but then it didn't necessarily push out the cash in lieu. So then I decided this year to be a little bit more accurate because the health insurance is going to be less because we're only paying for two and you have the compensation line is going to be more because that is getting, and I, and I adjusted the taxes that we pay on it. So, mm -hmm. but, um, and it is, there was a little bit difference because I think, this year in 2022, the cash in lieu of benefits was offered that only rather than what we would pay if that staff joined the health insurance program is like whatever the family, like whatever you would choose. And we pay 80%. But with the cash in lieu, Rob only offered like a single person's amount. 
And we talked as a group and said, we didn't think it was fair because like if they came back to the health insurance, that line would be for the full family amount. So, and I was, whether it was fair, but I also didn't want to be off on the budget because they could come back to the health insurance line at any time. And if we don't budget for the full amount, then we're always going to be over. But, and so whether that amount lives in health insurance or lives in compensation, I said, I'd rather have the full amount be there so that if it flips around, we're not going to be underestimating because the cash and leave was only for one person versus the family that they would have selected. Got it. So some of the previously uh, previous budget allocated to health insurance, the sixty two thousand, which is now nineteen thousand, is now reflected up in compensation. Some of it is in compensation, and there is one left because we don't have the four full time staff, which the health insurance sure. was mm -hmm. based on. Yep. So sort of a twenty percent reduction due to the one less person. Uh, well, I'm was, assuming it's not a street. Yeah, because yeah. I think Rob's. I think his health insurance was a family. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. it was a bigger like chunk that they would have oh, paid. Yeah. Yeah. So and like theoretically, I think when we were looking at the budget and we're talking about if we could bring in another full time, it's like that health insurance line is huge because you'd always have to budget for a family mm -hmm. amount. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, can't so do the, that. The 19 represents two staff. Mm -hmm. And the third staff is in is their health insurance in lieu payment is in the 290. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so it's essentially one less person who had a very expensive policy and because of the cash equivalent yeah. now being reflected in compensation, that's it's best for all the moving mm -hmm. parts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> by the way, thank you, you guys. I know budgeting is extremely difficult and time consuming and um, this is your first year as your as a I keep forgetting the name of the governance, but um, yeah. you know, good job. Go ahead. Yeah, so it's eight. Yeah, it's getting late. What do we do? Um, <laughs> so that I mean there's there's two ways to go here. It sounds like I'd like I'd like to see a financial review in 2023. Now get getting it into this budget in December, uh, we could say go go make that happen and then we'll approve the next the next go round or we can say that we we know uh financial review can be paid um through other means and the fat may already be here but we don't know so there's those are the, seem to be the two roads the only thing that i fixed. don't see rec, rec reflected although maybe it's in the back side is line 4070, the document you lab, is a budget of 5,000, is the, which you said, but you said because it's coming in its own cash, mm -hmm. that gets uh, elsewhere. And it's also on line 6100 at 5,000. One, one's the income and one's the expense. Yep. They, they even so out. they do even out. Yeah. Okay, that's what yeah. I was missing. Balance Thank each you. Other. Mm -hmm. Where does it say income versus ex oh, oh, there it is, income and then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where's the All expense? The expense better. starts at the bottom part of that first page. It's, it's just like the income is so little compared to the expense. Yeah. So. Oh, so it doesn't yeah. seem like a lot. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Five, sixes, sevens are all expenses. Yes, and income. Your fours are coming in and everything else is going on. Yeah. I don't see much choice other than to cut into the fat. I mean, not fat act, but that already minimal percentage, and then just say you're going to have to manage really carefully. Mm -hmm. um, carpool, <laughs> which is already a nice practice. Well, there certainly is an alternative. There's there's um, the money that's there yeah. mm -hmm. that Mark drew our attention to. Um, and yeah. we're not an investment. <laughs> no, we're not. My concern is more to set a, pri a precedent of, uh, like, oh well, we'll just throw it in and take it out of the the uh, the reserve fund. Um, but it is absolutely the board's decision. We're gonna have to have frozen pizza <laughs> <laughs> or less pizza. Yeah, I think pizza. that we. I mean, my instinct would be to move to accept with the ten thousand dollar additional added to the consultant line knowing that 
we do, the, the, a budget is just a plan and we can hope for the best and hope that we can, you know, but who knows what's going to happen with gas prices? Who knows what's going to happen with other things in the coming year? And we may find we do have to dip into to those funds, but that's why they're there. So sure. it's not that, the end of the world. That's funny is do. the result of bonds can't pay back into themselves like. Well, no, it's only can. the Verizon one. Everything yeah. else has been coming back and getting invested back. But that's in. that's cash sitting there, unlike every other in life. Right. So right. that's just I'm I'm just saying it looks like. Was that a motion? I mean, if we can turn that into a motion, <laughs> we might I, get a I, second and we might get yeah, out of here before it's I would move to accept with the $10,000 additional added to the consultant line item to pay for an audit or financial review. Um, and I would prefer not to put in language specifically about where that 10000 and it may not be 10000 it may be 5000 yeah, yeah. where it will come from, mm -hmm, because right. we may find that it fits into the budget as is, but we may find we do have other sources if we need them. So. Sure. Mm -hmm. And then there's that play line of capital gains, like just, right. you, you know, you came up with, it looks like that's often used to zero things out and say, well, with this close, look what capital gains can do for us. So, so um, putting my name on it. <laughs> that was Rachel uh, moving to accept with making room for I can second it. up to 10 in the consultant line. 50, 45. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll second. second. <laughs> yeah, Chance second. Yeah. Yeah. We're seconding it. Yeah. Uh, have, we, have we front loaded the discussion or is it further discussion or should I just call it? The only other request I'm going to have is to specify you have consultants, but mm -hmm. you actually have a particular consultant. And then so just to name that one. Okay. You mean Nathan? Mm -hmm. You could have two lines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I think is your motion anyway. Mine was just to take that single line that is there now and to and to be specific. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm actually the one in when I when I was just summarizing what Rachel oh. said, I just I mentioned that line item. She actually didn't. So what you're talking about was not actually that was that was my summarizing. I just said consultant line, but we can alter that language if we want so um do we want to be specific about uh to accept with up to ten thousand dollars additional uh added to the budget to cover consultants fees or no your your motion i thought was really good okay mine so we'll was just, just to say for the that you have, <laughs> okay. consult, have a consultant and then one is this and the other is that okay so you, you just oh, want you to just clarify for, for, yeah, for, yeah. yeah. So which for, is, for so, uh, consultant becomes one subline and the yeah. uh, finance or uh, audit or financial review becomes the second line that's good so yeah. so we're yeah that would be super operational but we're not part of the amendment. motion yeah. i mean if are you making an amendment? Or are you happy with Rachel's friendly amendment? The, the only amendment I just thought with Rachel's mind was just to say now we have two sublines under consultants. Yeah, I think that's more that, operational. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. All right. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed. And that's unanimous. And uh uh co-directors are up for their for <laughs> um, and thanks for a nice thorough one. And uh, I hope people have had a chance to digest all the good things that have been happening here. So in uh, in lieu of, and to save time, we were uh, selfishly not kind of like to read through it or to, to go through every um, thing in there and everyone has hopefully had a chance to take a look at it. We wanted to focus on uh, financials and budget tonight and maybe just highlight one item in there and that would be the strategic planning pro mm. project um super exciting and on its way so last week uh um, we, yeah uh on the back there yeah, last uh, last week we, we had our first um i guess staff retreat nathan was calling it so the first of two uh the second part is scheduled for thursday um, and so this was a focus on um, leadership, team building, and um, it was really great. So like Nathan gave us a handful of homework to do and um, yeah, so we're getting started and we're on our way. After talking about it with you guys for a few <laughs> months now, it's, 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 it's happening. So that's, that's wonderful. Yeah, great. That's the big like more than a handful. Of <laughs> <laughs> so that's just this Thursday, huh? Wow. Yeah, the second part. So we he actually 
he had uh he he's written an agenda for a three hour staff retreat and we requested that he broke it in half <laughs> just because of our schedules have been kind of slammed so sure. we we split it into two um and that's that'll take us to the end of the year and then um we'll enter the next phase awesome. yeah. um oh yeah uh the the green mountain film festival is its own it's not a line item here it's its own budget right it's its own budget and um we can share that with you as well um if anyone's interested it's uh Fibon has put that together uh for us and um yeah we we didn't include it in here um we might in the, the future we're not making any money from it and um yeah, so at, we're, that's kind of part of the strategic planning uh, discussion is also like how to uh, going forward, you know, looking years ahead, how we might want to manage any project. Like, do we take a 10% admin fee for having the Vermont Youth Documentary Lab and the Green Mountain Film Festival under our mm -hmm. organization? That's kind of standard sure. uh, mm -hmm. uh, and something that Paibon has suggested. Do we just, you know, say that if they do well, we... So, uh, um, Paibon, um, what's your last name? Lupin Hannon. Yeah. Um, Thank you. He's really great and a local executive director of the Center for Arts and Learning in Montpelier and just a really enthusiastic and knowledgeable nonprofit person that um, stepped up. She was part of the advisory committee of the Green Mountain Film Festival advisory committee that I put together and volunteered to take this interim director position. I'm hoping that she. Oh, that's volunteer. Uh, so she volunteered to <laughs> to do it for like five hours a month and to get paid okay. at a, a low wage rate. So sure, you sure. know, like yeah, that's it feels <laughs> all like the, all yeah. that volunteer. That's yeah, uh, yeah. So she stepped like I guess out of the committee and into the one kind of contracted position, and um, yeah. Very so good. hoping that she does that. And that's March of twenty twenty four. Will be that. Yeah, there'll be more news. The I guess the the kind of only thing that's happening with that project is that we've planned um as like a committee retreats um in February. So we're gonna have they're gonna yeah. spend some money on donuts and get together to get everybody together in person and do like a visioning kind of thing mm -hmm. for the day um and then get started with the the festival planning. I have to ask this. Where is that? Oh, it's not. It's not in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. He said it's its own budget, and I oh, was yeah. building that. Yeah. yeah. But we can share it. Yeah. I mean, it's just cool. we just haven't included it because it's it's brand new and it's it's in process. Yeah. Who picks the films? Uh you can. It's it's going to be a volunteer screening committee. So we're just going to just like it was done historically. There'll be anybody that wants to volunteer to be on the screening committee. There'll be hundreds of films to to look at, and there'll be like a spreadsheet of judging them. Um, and the Pivon's sort of in charge of organizing that part of it? Yeah. Well, there'll be a, a team of people at that point to to kind of volunteer. That That's the, the most like labor-intensive part is building a schedule for a festival. But um, yeah. Uh, one more question about the strategic planning. When will the board be involved? In, in what way? Are we a focus group? Are we going to be more? What yeah, you're going to be, there's going to be a board retreat. Okay. Um, we don't have a date yet. I think it's just happening, kind of going through the right. phases mm -hmm. of, of Nathan's um, calendar, right? Okay. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll definitely keep you posted and give everyone plenty of time and, and no respect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think he's also suggested a three hour meeting with the board. So maybe we can split that in half too. If that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to need a lot that's of pizza. About, yeah. yeah, that's about all we can manage, I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great. Um, people have other questions for co-directors or well, I just have a negative impression of what a retreat is. Yeah. Media for so long. Now, yeah, we get to my house, which is on the other side of the street. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. To see where the action is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> did you have a did you have a lot of trick or treaters? Oh yeah. Yeah. So we had like oh, probably fifteen hundred. Oh, you're over on the other end. Yeah, toward, toward the was, Halloween house. In the Halloween house. Now. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next, the real. So yeah, way 
Let's, wait, where are we here? Down the opposite end up on the main street corner. My next door neighbors, uh, Bonnie and Bob, were the ones who did the Halloween house for yeah, decades. Yeah. That's she retired from that two years ago and gave me all her stock. But now we're right. we don't have a giant skeleton. No, we're the we had the um camping skeletons. Did you the entire front oh, part like is all that you can't turn off right. the yeah. Oh, that's a great yeah. house. That's yeah. like, my sons love that. Yeah, yes. yeah, it's You're super great. Uh, <laughs> my husband could probably help us with that. <laughs> yeah. The realtors yeah. never warn anybody when they buy or rent property no. what's going to happen on Halloween. As yeah. soon as we moved that's in, funny, somebody yeah. showed up at our door and was like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> they told you about Halloween, did they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, but, yeah. The so next year, come up, come up to my end. <laughs> are you guys, you guys talk to any schools um, about um, working with them to produce video for their students? And because a lot, there's a lot of times there's educational funding. We can probably save them some money, and they can probably pay us for some of our equipment, making it a win-win. Yeah, I mean, we've been doing a, a ton of that. Uh, so I've over the last year and a half working with schools so yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean a number of there's consulting projects field. and um, is it recommend is it reflected in the government it's not i mean it's minimal i mean it's the we've had some consulting oh, you're income um here. we've had yeah, here's the, yeah, yeah it would be i guess it would be under how did we categorize like uh we did a, a consulting project with orange southwest we did it uh yeah we have an ongoing consulting project with um twinfield right and then um i'm working on one right now that is with montpelier high school to do a accredited after school uh course in the spring mm -hmm. um so I think yeah. you guys could put your heads together on a pitch and the reason i'm mentioning it is orange suit uh, southwest supervisor union did phenomenal video stuff yeah. Uh, a couple of years ago, I remember going and seeing it, but it cost them quite a lot. And we are saving them a lot of money that's in their budget. So yeah. having them provide some of that money because we're saving them money is, you know, a logical discussion to have. So yeah, definitely. yeah let's put together a team that they had IT at Orange Southwest. The yeah. letter, the letter of thanks and gratitude was quite. Um, yeah, they did a bit, quite they, nice. They put together some new videos with this, the things that we recommended that they you know purchase and yeah. yeah and and of course you know uh schools and students are welcome to come and utilize our resources and equipment and yeah yeah but i'm just saying the money's in their budget it's oh, not being spent yeah, yeah. because you have taken up the slack and maybe there can be some sharing or is it being spent it's always hard to go ask somebody for their unspent money because yeah, I mean, it, there's uh, yeah, luckily we, you yeah. did get, we did get paid. Yeah, we get, we get paid every time most that we work with schools. I'm going to get paid but for the mentorships. No, yeah, I mean, we. I mean, how Sorry, much are you suggesting that we? Spot because you're on both sides of this. Yeah. <laughs> um. I, yeah. I mean, there's. I guess we can think of schools as a as a as a revenue source, <laughs> but we also have a mission to serve them. Exactly. And but we I get paid by Comcast, so. Um, that's a more of a philosophical moment. Yeah, I, I think that <laughs> with our conversations, it's like definitely more in the uh, relationship building and community yeah. partnership realm. And that, you know, a lot of the, when it comes to like a financial, uh, you know, recommendation to them, I, I it's typically like a sliding scale thing it's, or it's a recommendation. And we, are we up, you know, for years and years, we did $75 an hour for a consulting fee. Now we do 125 an hour. So, I mean, we're not, it's, Comparatively, it's it's not making a ton of money, but it's 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 a great thing that has spread around, and the mm -hmm. teachers talk to each other, and yeah. I get emails from you know new new teachers that are interested in um, working with us. So right. yeah, I mean it's it's definitely it's moving. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's two different areas. One is operations, one's capital, and one is expense. Yeah. What I'm suggesting is to consider having a capital discussion. You've had the expense discussion. You're consulting. Uh, the capital discussion is is Orca reducing the need for capital expenditures on the school side, where this is our area of expertise, and we're providing really excellent equipment as well as facilities. Um, oh sure, yeah. And that's the part where I'm saying, you know, can we not? Well, you must, because it is something where I think we're all very supportive of doing, but more of a 
you know, we are helping you, you will help us. And the reason I bring it up is, is not to be improper, not to say, but but to say that in previous years, the board has definitely taken the position that Comcast is a revenue source, but it is going, you know, it is it is likely to be going away. And so we need to try to find other ways to fulfill our mission. But just because we're fulfilling a nonprofit mission doesn't mean we do it for free. If there, you know, nothing is free. So to do it sustainably is a different matter. We're not doing it for profit. But if we can do it, go ahead, Dave. How do we uh, participate in Giving Tuesday? Um, yeah, so Giving Tuesday was a, a very uh, uh, first attempt of Orca. I, I mean, get that. Yeah, no, she got it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was it was a it was just a call out on um, our email list. So we have a our newsletter has four hundred subscribers of so not, we ask not people to be giving yeah yeah we said that you know this that we just joined the call i mean giving tuesday is a new we didn't phenomenon. Want for any of our staff to go and uh help other people no it was i mean giving tuesday is kind okay, of like coming thinking, off of the know, cyber monday right? yeah. oh yeah in that we participated in asking people to give money okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah it was maybe the I, first I, time I, that we actually that did a saying. post on that day yeah. and coordinated it with giving tuesday so it yeah. was definitely i think the first time that we yeah. officially asked for people to donate to it us. was for me it was a bit of an experiment to see what kind of response we would have to say that you know this is yeah. if you if you would like to support community media in central vermont here's your opportunity and you know people are feeling philanthropic on Giving Tuesday and you know we, well, we made it a little bit to me as a board member that uh, the other part of that would be for us to organize some a way of saying how Orca gives to the community. Yeah, that's a great idea. I, I think that um on Giving Tuesday. Yeah, that's a, that's a really great idea. I think that um writing like part of those um it, you know one of the things that we haven't done in a long time is like an annual report and yeah. oftentimes when you see like a letter from an executive director or a letter from a board member on giving tuesday it it, it kind of reads like an annual report yeah. that like here's the you know and i think that that's a really great kind of checking ourselves at that point in in at the end of the year and being like hey these are all the things that we've done and look at like how we've you know we've offered free services and resources to these communities and yeah. continue to do so and okay yeah okay. <clears throat> so i know it on the finances that the paper is finally starting to pipe the comcast check in november was smaller than the one in august so here it comes yeah well it's it's um gone as low as did it dip into the 90s and then came back? It's done, it's done kind of this mm -hmm. and flatlined. Mm -hmm. oh, that's yeah. a, that's yeah, a, we're looking. Was that the low I did? I think it of the year? did like a, I think it did like a 97 or something. Does so anybody have an inside and then it came back? Comcast. Um, no, we, we have a point person, Melissa, um, that Van folks talked to. I was going to, we were going to reach out about some other things and well, what I mean, makes me to ask is, that, you know, I was watching 744, you know, went across the screen, call this number immediately because Comcast is threatening to close down channel 744, which is the, uh, I guess it's Fox, but it's covering most of the sports. Huh. So I know the Scopatoni family and their, their, their husband yes. works for Fox Sports. Oh my God. Uh, so I'm just saying, why is Comcast cutting off uh, the station that has basketball and sports, and, and yeah. I think for a while they were showing FIFA. Oh my goodness. Uh, and well, they're moving is that, off. Is there. that a sadness about Comcast that they're in trouble in some way that they I, need to I, close down local stations? I don't think any of us have any. Are they site closing it down or moving it off of the cheaper or standard <laughs> package? They probably are just pre premiumizing it. I would bet. I I'm just thinking it has an impact on the community. That kind of a yeah. Yeah. threat. I think they're they're all thinking of creative ways to get more okay. money for their mm -hmm. services. I'm sure. Yeah. Movie yeah. channels is one of them. Yeah. It happens from time to time when there'll be a disagreement with Comcast or one of the providers, and so you see that appeal that shows up. When, right, right. Especially just like Fox Sports, or I don't think it's like the local channel. It would well, be it is very local. It carries the local news as much as CAX does. WFFF. It is. Oh, so you're talking about the, the local Fox channel. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'd have to, that would be something to look into. Anyway, yeah. And did you guys do three budgets, like one that was the one you presented, and then that was the what if the board has a bid? And <laughs> so we were, I think we talked about, you know, where if there was pushback, like where are we, like, you know, immediately the colas and the compensation, it's like, you know, if that had to go, like, if they're like, you need to cut it by so much. It was like, that part is like, you know, it would make our lives easier and nicer, but at, you know, you're like, Comcast is going down. We want it to be, and it's like, okay, well, that would be the place that would be the push. Mm -hmm. And so I, when we first put together the budget, we didn't have the government appropriations and the, um, the capital gains amount. And then as we tried to reduce it and reduce it, we're like, okay, we can't go any further as, you know, until we take out the cola bits and the salary bits. So then we're like, okay, well, we, you know, that's where we came up with the government appropriations and the capital gains amount. Yeah. And also I had to tell them, you know, I took the low check amount for the Comcast and used that to do mm -hmm. the budget rather than what kind of was mm -hmm. in the budget before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, so, and, and so when you were asking about the fact we did, cause we had like, you know, if we could have another person, how much, and it was like, okay, we can't, there's no way that we could trim everything to be able to get this. And so we went through different scenarios and we came back with, you know, this one we are feeling good about if the board said, no, you can't use the 25,000 in government appropriations. You can't have the capital gains. And it's like, okay, then, you know, are we ready to be like, okay, we'll have to give up on the COLA. Cause I think everything else we did trim as much as we could just cause we didn't want to use those two bits. So mm -hmm. I think we had a new, like, it was a long budget back and forth of, okay, if we had good times, what's it? It's like, okay, we don't have good times. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was yeah. a very tricky year. Mm -hmm. Was there yeah. uh, something on the co-director's report that prompted that question about three budgets? No, uh, it's that whenever I had to do a budget or a business development proposal, uh, I always had three budgets. Okay, so <laughs> um, this, are we wrapping we're up? Voter wrapping up. Are we wrapping up? up. <laughs> yeah, we're wrapping that up. We're wrapping up the voter records report. Yes. Okay, uh, so I'll accept. I'll take a motion. Move to, to accept. Okay, great. Uh, a second. Anyone second? I second <laughs> the uh, code records report. Um, thanks for your work, guys. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. If I say aye. aye. And opposed, and unanimous, and old business. Got a lot of business. I did. You guys get the t-shirts? The t-shirts are right over there. They look great. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, you did hear yeah. that? Are they for the distributing. Do you all walk with one or no? There's no, well, no. no. We're being a little conservative. They're good. They're good. They're like they were. We Zach gifted them to the community producers first. Who are the volunteer producers, and then we'll kind of use them as like promotional. Mm -hmm. um, I won one. Yeah, you won one. Yeah, I've been wearing oh, yeah. just one of those. Yeah, I don't see why we can get one to every board member too. <laughs> we'll see how many are left in February. How's that? Okay. Well, how much um, do they cost us? Actually, February. Well, you can go to the donate page and you can decide on, uh, <laughs> on the website there. Other old business. Uh, new business. Strategic planning on the horizon. Retreats will get scheduled in sometime. Early yeah, we'll mention that to, on Thursday to Nathan, that maybe it would be the sooner the better that we can get that, something on your guys' schedule. Yeah, um, good, good. we can all be there. Plan mm -hmm. of yeah. yeah. So if we, if we're meeting again in February. The I cannot do the 28th before Feb the fourth Tuesday of February. And That's I will break. Yeah. I would I would hope that we could move it to the, not the second, like we did this time, but the third Thursday. Sorry, Tuesday is the 21st. How does that look for people? It looks great for me. It's the day after the um Holiday of President's Day. It is, yeah, the twentieth is a federal holiday. The twenty-first. Um, I just want to make sure it wasn't going to have our people all in Florida or something. I'm pitching, yeah, we uh, like our, actually, our break is the following week. I'm pitching two twenty-one twenty-three as our next as our next meeting. People can flex with that and settle back to. Oh, Thursday. 
I, I might have said Thursday one of those times. Sorry, Tuesday. Okay. 21st of February, 2020. Actually, 221. Yes. 23. Yeah. It's the year. So there's a lot date. of Jews going. Okay. <laughs> it's 30. Yeah. Uh, I mean, people are showing up at six. There are people itching I, to I get in. I wonder why I was early. ready at 6 30. No, I'm not itching to get in. Early. Okay. 6 30. We will. 6.30, we'll hold it. We'll sustain our 6.30. It's a long-standing time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I guess I, the new business was quiet. I, I could entertain a motion to adjourn at 8.28, coming in under 8.30. Mm -hmm. Nicely, awesome. people. So Even with all this business. Uh, anyone want to dip their toe into the adjournment motion? I would like to just append what I need about five minutes with the current staff after this meeting to talk about a piece of old business that I don't want to have on the table. All right. Sure. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, a, a CBS move to adjourn. Down. I'll move to adjourn. <laughs> I'll second. And raise your second. And all those in favor of honoring it's it. It's a privileged motion. It's fun. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't need even.